only two controllers. So, this is what your user stories on your wiki should look like. Timesheet list, done. Enter hours, done. Okay. So guess what's next? Take a while, guess. We're done with priority one user stories. Now it's sign in, sign out. User can sign into the system using a valid employee ID and password. And user can sign out if it's signing to end the current session. Very well. So that's what we're going to be tackling tonight. Oh, that's working. <coughs> All right, so now let's go to the home page. And from the home page, I should be able to click on login and it should take me to sign in. Now, do I want to go to sign in.html? No, I want to go to sign in.htm. Remember, I need Spring to handle the signing process. Where am I going to get? When I try signing.htm, 404. <laughs> of course, I don't have anything done for signing. So that's the first thing you got to do. You got to configure configure it or configure the um, the signing in the in the XML so let's do that we're gonna go into the Timex web servlet here it is what's the first thing that we're gonna have to do anybody in the XML configuration we gotta tell Spring, what to look for to start the whole process, remember? Where do we do that? We do that in a bean that we are calling URL map. And what is that? What is that bean? What is, what is the purpose of that bean? The, pep the purpose of that bean is to be able to map a URL to a controller. If you see this in the URL, that means that it's going to be taken care of by this controller. Right, it's one of those Spring Framework classes called the Simple URL Handler Mapping. So this is what we need to see: sign in HTM. Okay. So I'm just going to copy one of these guys, paste it. Right. I don't like typing. And I say, whenever you see this in the URL, make sure that the make sure that the signing controller takes over. So we're going to call it the sign. Sign in controller. Okay. Do I do we have that controller? No. We have to create it. Okay. So I just take this. The definition of this controller. Copy it. All right. Look at this. <laughs> All this stuff is just copy and paste. This one is going to be called signing controller. Who's going to handle that? Well, somehow we're going to have to create a class in the controller's package called the signing controller, capital S. Remember, classes in Java always start with capital letter. Okay. And most probably, we're not going to need the assistance of the timesheet manager. 
Why? What is the purpose of the signing controller? Authenticate. That means that it has to recognize the employee, right? Well, who can help us with that? Who can help us with authenticating the employee? The employee manager. Very well. Do we have that? No. We have a department manager and we have a timesheet manager. So, welcome to the club. So, we're going to have to create here our employee manager, which is represented by this guy. Right? Now we have included that manager as part of our system. We didn't even have him as part of our system. Does that mean that the system didn't work? No, it did work. In fact, all this time we have been producing a working system that can be deployed and seen and tested by any of the stakeholders of your system. Anybody. Anybody can see this system as it stands, as it is, as it is uh, um, completed right now and test it. Which is the really the beauty of the agile development process. At the end of every use case, user story, you will have to produce a well implemented tested system that it does something. Something that can be seen, evaluated, and uh, be given feedback upon. Okay? So now we're including the employee manager. And most probably, that employee manager is going to be used right here by the signing controller. Okay? And when we successfully when we successfully log in, we're going to go to timesheet list. So we're going to keep that. Got it? So far so good. Okay. Now, what do you guys think? Is the signing controller going to be a timesheet list type controller? Or is it going to be an enter hour type controller? Yeah, I'm talking about is the is the signing controller going to be extending from the controller like the timesheet list did, or is it going to be extending from the simple form controller, which is what the enter hours controller did? What do you guys think? Remember what I said two weeks ago: every controller is going to be either one or the other, right? They're going to be inheriting from the controller, which is some something sim as simple as just handle the request, or you will probably have to uh, inherit from the simple form controller, which means it's going to allow us to have a form backing object and reference data and all these um, validations back and forth, right? And yes. You guessed it right. It's going to be of the enter hours controller type. Why? Because we're asking for information. What, what kind of information are we asking from the user? 
we're asking the username and the password. Yeah, it's only two pieces of information, but who cares? It could be one piece of information or it could be a hundred. The fact is you're asking for information and you need a form. You need a form to post these two pieces of information, the username and the password, so that it can be authenticated. So yes, the signing controller is going to be of the enter hours controller type. Then you know what? I'm not going to copy the timesheet list controller type. I'm going to copy this guy. The enter hours controller type. There you go. Now, what do you think is going to be the command class? And this is going back to, wait a minute, what the heck is a command class? You guys remember what was the command class in the time sh in the enter hours controller? Well, according to what I just copied, the command class was the timesheet. Oh, wait a minute. That means that all the information that gets captured on the form will be put together into an object of that type, the command class type. So when I was entering the hours for the whole timesheet, then it will create a timesheet object, right? When I'm signing in, what kind of command class do you guys think I'm trying to create? No idea? What two pieces of information am I asked when I sign in? What are the two pieces of information? The employee ID. You guys don't remember? Okay, then we're going to go back to sign in. Here they are. Employee ID and password. Tell me who owns those two pieces of information in your system in our system, Timex. The employee, to be exact. I only have departments, employees, and timesheets. The employee owns the employee ID and the password. That means that the command class in here, in this form, is going to be an employee. It's going to be a partial object of what a real employee is. But who cares? I don't care if it's partial, if it's complete. The command class object created here is going to be of the type employee. Because those two pieces of information come from that type, from that object, I should say. Okay, so it's not going to be timesheet, it's going to be employee. What's going to be the form view? Do you guys remember what is the form view? The form view is a property of a simple form controller that determines Fill in the blank. Determines the page that it will go to when it's an empty, a brand new request. You guys remember time enter hours? When we was the first time that you were creating a timesheet. What were you displayed? You were displayed a nice blank form with no department, zeros on Monday, zeros on Tuesday, nothing. Okay? That form was called enterhours.jsp. The view, the form view, 
what's called enter hours. Now let's backtrack for a second. What is it going to be called for the signing controller? Yeah, sign in. So we're going to need a sign in.jsp, very similar to this sign in.html. Remember, you guys have to convert your HTMLs into JSPs. Okay, so it's going to be called sign in. That's where it's going to take me when nobody has signed in. And I just ask, hey, what's your employee ID? What's your password? Once it's successfully authenticated and signed in, where is it going to take me to? That's typically called the success view. Where is it going to take me to? Timesheet list. So I'm going to keep this redirection to timesheet list.htm because that is where it's supposed to take me to. Okay? Now, thinking about the process of authentication, of signing, do you guys think and I'm going to need the timesheet manager? No. We already determined that we're not going to need the timesheet manager. How about the department manager? Not really. I don't care what department this guy belongs to. In fact, the department manager, we're just using it to determine who we're going to charge time to. Now, what department they worked on. So, really, the only property that we're going to have to inject is going to be the timesheet manager. I'm sorry, the employee manager. Because we do need the help of the employee manager to determine if that's the correct uh, guy. And I think I erased the wrong... <laughs> I've been modifying enter hours all this time, okay. So in here it's sign in redirection to timesheet list and instead of the timesheet manager is going to be the employee manager and we're not going to need the department manager cool and it's going to have a form backing object Remember the form backing object? The form backing object is the actual object that gets created on the controller to pass in to the view. And then when all the data is populated on the front end by the view, that data will be part of the object back into the controller. So the form backing object, when you sign in, it's going to be It's going to be a new employee. A new employee. Can you tell me what employee is here? What employee is logged in here right now? A new employee. What's the employee ID? Blank. What's the password? Blank. What's the name? Blank. A new employee. Okay? That's the form backing object. <coughs> now, when you finally get to this page with a brand new employee and you type in number one and then some kind of password I think it's called rapid Java and then you click on login according to this page it's supposed to post it's supposed to post this employee ID and this password create an employee object out of it and then execute on submit. You guys remember on submit? On submit, 
is this subroutine that gets executed when somebody has posted something into the controller. Remember, it's going back onto itself. So it came to sign in, you fill out the information, and when you submit, it will post onto itself and it will be handled by the same controller. Just like the enter hours. If you guys remember on the enter hours, we created a brand new timesheet. We'll fill out the information from the timesheet and when you, when you say save, it will post onto itself. It will go to the same controller and, it's in, and the controller will execute the unsubmit. And that's, that's where it, the actual timesheet gets saved in the database with the help of the manager. Okay, and then the unsubmit will just take us to the next level, which is the success view, if there were no problems, whatever. And that's exactly what we're doing here. On the unsubmit, we're creating a new model in view. And the new model in view is based on the success view. So it's going to take me to timesheet list. You guys have any problem with that? No problem with that, right? So I was given a brand new page. I put one rapid Java, click on login. That will post onto the sign in controller once again and it will execute on submit. And the on submit, all it does is forward with me to timesheet list. Does anybody have a problem with that? No? Right. Assuming that we have an employee ID 1 with password rapid Java. We're not creating employees here. So if I type in here 100 and there is no such an employee in the database, what should it come up with? with an error message, right? You should come back with an error message saying, hey, I don't know who employee 100 is, but right now I'm going to type employee 1, and I'm going to put rapid Java, which I believe, I believe, it's Mike Dover's password. Okay? So I click login, and I'm taking to Mike Dover's timesheets. What if I type 2, employee ID 2, with password visual pat? Where am I taking to? Of who? Correct. It's hard coded. So where are we failing? Are we failing in the actual timesheet list controller? So instead of one, it should be two when I sign in as two. But wait a minute, how am I gonna know who signed who? Say what? Oh, so you're right. Okay, so I'm going to have to get the employee ID, but where's the employee coming from? But from whoever signed in, right? But does the timesheet list controller whose functionality is to show a list of timesheets. Does it know who is signing? No. In fact, in the signing controller right here, the guy that is taking care of controlling this process, he sees a one, he sees a rapid Java password, and he's taking me right away to the timesheet list without even verifying that this guy exists, that the password agrees, We're missing something. So yes, I have a problem with 
just put in a one there, rapid job, I'm being taken to the uh, Ajay Kumar's timesheets without even authenticating if it's really Ajay Kumar or not. So where do we accomplish that? You guys remember back when we were doing the enter hours controller. We had the form backing object. Here it is. We set the employee ID hard-coded to, to 1. So all the timesheets that get produced, all the new timesheets that get added to the database, they all belong to Jay Kumar because <laughs> the employee ID is hard-coded here. Same thing with the timesheet list controller. The timesheet list controller, when you want to handle a request, and you ask the timesheet manager to get to get all the timesheets. Who are we selecting? Ajay Kumar again. So wait a minute. What we really have to do is, instead of hard coding the ID of the employee here, we have to grab the employee ID from some employee object. And this employee object has to exist in what is typically known as the session of the web application. Can you guys explain me what is the session of a web application? It keeps track of who you are regardless of how many requests you go through regardless of how many URLs you go through in the web application. Now, we can go to sign in, we can go to timesheet list, we can go to enter hours. Those are all different URLs in our web application, right? But if we take the employee that sign in and save it in the session, we're going to make that employee available across the different requests and responses of the web application. So, Timesheet List Controller should be able to just grab that employee from the session, get the ID, and get the timesheets only from that ID. And the Enter Hours Controller, right here, should be able to do the same. Go into the session, grab the employee that is logged in, get the time the employee ID and then set the employee ID of the new timesheet to his or her employee ID not to the hard coded one you get that so what have we determined we have determined that we need to create an employee object and save it in something called a session so that it can be shared among all the different controllers. Right? That's the job of the signing controller. The signing controller has to be able to, first of all, authenticate these two pieces of information. One, employee ID, rapid Java password, go and look at it in the database with the help of the employee manager because the signing controller doesn't know anything about the database or the employees. So with the help of the employee manager, go ahead and look at if this guy really exists. Compare password to password, right? If they match, take that employee object and save it in the session and say, okay, now you can go to timesheet list. If the employee doesn't exist. If the password doesn't match, it has to come back with an error message and cannot, cannot allow me to go further. In other words, I should not be able to go to timesheet list or enter hours or anything else because I'm not logged in, really. So you guys understand that? All right.
Now, the signing controller is going to need the help of somebody called the application security manager. And the application security manager is going to be this guy that knows how to store stuff in the session and retrieve stuff from the session. We're not going to we're not going to let the signing controller, which is just supposed to control the authentication process, we're not going to let the signing controller know all this stuff about the session. Signing controller could care less. We need an expert on session, on specifically on application security, uh, that knows how to handle the sessions. And it's going to be a very simple it's going to be a very simple um, this is the application security manager okay the application security manager is going to be able to get an employee from the session or set an employee into the session or remove an employee from the session. Can you guys explain me all these three? Why would we need to remove an employee from the session? When he logs out? Perfect. When you log out, you're saying, you know what? My session is done. Gone. I don't want you to recognize who am I am the next time that I come to you. And so the application security manager should be able to go into the session and remove that employee. Gone. I don't know who you are now. What, what would you need to set the employee? In the opposite, right? When you log in. When you log in and you want to be recognized, the application security is going to set in the session that employee. It's going to save it in the session. Okay, I'm going to save you in the session so I know from now on who you are. And that's what the set employee is going to do. What about get employee? Can you tell me why we would need to get employee? To know who is logged in. <laughs> uh, Timesheet list controller is about to show me a list of timesheets. But wait a minute, before it does that, it has to know who is logged in. Hey, application security manager, could you please get the employee out of the session and tell me who the heck is logged in? So those are the three um, functions that are going to be implemented by the application security manager. And notice that the session is part of the request. So that's why we need to keep the request as one of the parameters in all of them. Okay? The request, which is of the type HTTP server request, has a function called get session. Okay? Get session. And then you're going to be able to, once you get the session, you're going to be able to get an attribute out of the session. What's going to be the name of the attribute that we're going to be using? User. So the session will have an attribute called user, and the value of that attribute is going to be an employee object with all the information about this employee. The, the employee ID, the password, the name, um, absolutely everything about this employee is going to be in the user attribute. Okay? So when we set the employee in the session, what do we do? We pass the request and we pass the actual employee that we want to save. And what do we do? We say, hey, request, get me the session, and then you set the attribute to that employee. Got it? All right. So once we've done that, once we've done that,
this is the next thing that we're going to do. After we create the form backing object, which is a new employee, and before we actually complete the unsubmit, which is the one that takes me to the timesheet list, we got to be able to authenticate the user. Okay? And there's something called, these are two functions that get implemented by the signing controller as part of the simple form controller that get overwritten. They're called the show form and the unbind and validate. Okay? And basically, the unbind and validate, which is the one that we want to concentrate right now, is the one that actually validates the user. How does it do that? Unbind and validate is going to have the request and it's going to have the command object. You guys remember the command object is an employee right? It's the employee actually, the employee that gets created out of the employee ID and the password that's being put input in the form, okay? And what do we do? Well, first of all, uh, and it also has um, an errors, just in case there is some binding exceptions or whatever. If there's any errors, then we're just going to return. We know that something went wrong and we're just not going to validate the user. But if there are no errors, Look at what we do. We take the command object and we cast it into an employee. We call it the form employee. Okay? We call it the form employee. Okay? And then we do the same thing with the database employee. And then what do we do? We say, okay, employee manager, get me the employee out of the session. Okay? Get me the employee out of the session, which at this point, I'm sorry, not out of the session. Employee manager, get me an employee. And the employee ID is this one. Remember, the employee manager is the expert in employees. So it's, it's going to go to the database and it's going to try to find an employee if, if it exists. We don't know if it exists with that particular employee ID. Now, this employee ID is the ID that was put in the form. Okay? Remember, it's the, it's the one is the one employee here it is is the one employee that gets put in here so if you put a hundred in here it's going to try to tell the employee manager hey employee manager give me employee a hundred right that's the form employee ID and the employee manager will come back with either null or an employee if it comes back with no, then you're going to have to create an error. And this is how you create errors in the um, in the Spring Framework. The errors object, which is an, it's, it's also, the errors objects, by the way, it's, it's, um, it's an object that gets passed around. The, the, the scope of this uh, object is the request. The request and response. So there will be an errors for every request and respond. Request and response. Okay. So if there is any problem trying to get that employee out of the database by the employee manager, we know that it's going to come up with null. No. It's going to come back and say, "Sorry, I couldn't get it. It's null." No. And if that's the case, then we're going to create an errors reject, and this is going to be the error message: error login invalid. And we're going to see where that, the actual English equivalent of that error comes from. If not, it means that it actually found the employee. The, em the, em the employee manager found that employee. And what do we have to do with that employee? Well, we have to verify that the password agrees, right? So we take and, and we save that as the DB employee the one that came from the employee manager. We say, okay, the password from that database employee, if it's equal to the password of the form employee, then we know that their their passwords agree, right? 
we know that they put the, the, the right, the correct password. And if that's the case, then we're going to tell the application security manager to set the employee in the session. Which employee? The database employee. Got it? That's how we are authenticating the person. How, that's how we are actually authenticating the person. So the first step is to create an object out of those two pieces of information, the ID and the password. Then tell the employee manager to go and try to grab one of them from the database. If it exists, then we know at least that the employee ID is correct. Then we compare the passwords. The database employee from the form employee, we, we compare the passwords. If they agree, if they are the same, then you know that you have authenticated them. And you save the employee in the session. If not, then you're going to produce another error saying error login invalid. You got that? Come on. The simple form controller has a method called show form. Okay? And this is this show form is by default the ones that it, that it's going to be that it's going to run that shows the configure form view delegating to the analogous whatever um, control model here. So basically the show form is going to default to the show form of the class inherited, which in this case the class inherited for uh, simple form controller is the abstract form controller. But we can overwrite that show form. And the idea is that can be overwritten in subclasses to show a custom view. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to show a custom view writing directly to the response or preparing the response before rendering the view. So when you want to do something specific before you actually go in view to the view of the of the page, then you put that code in the show form. And that show form will get executed before it reaches the view. And what are we going to do here? What we're going to do is we're going to ask the application security manager to get us the employee from the request. In other words, we're going to say, hey, can you please tell me if somebody is already logged in? That's basically what we're doing here. Application security manager, get me an employee from the request. If it does not come null, if it's not null, then you know that somebody is logged in. Okay? You know that somebody is logged in. So, pretty much you're not going to do anything. You're just going to return the model in view with the success view and that's it. But, but, if the application security manager determines that nobody is in the session, no employees in the session, okay, that means nobody's logged in then you are just going to show the form. And show the forms mean show the empty login page where you have to type employee ID and password. You got it? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my signing HTML so let's see if this project is going to work the way it is so we have just to recap, when you see a signing.htm, it's going to be taken care of by signing controller. Signing controller is taken care of by this signing controller class, which we have created the class for it. Right? Yeah. 
The command class is going to be the employee. The form view is going to be sign in, which we already have a sign in.jsp for it. When we successfully log in, it's going to redirect me to timesheet list, and we're going to inject the employee manager. Oh, by the way, do we have the in the signing controller, do we have an employee manager? Yes, we have an employee manager property and we have the getter and setter for the employee manager. So that's, those two are very important because those two are the ones that are going to allow us to inject an employee manager in here. Okay? What else? Oh, we need to inject the application security manager. Remember, the signing controller doesn't know how to create an application security manager. We only have a property and a getter and setter. So we're going to have to inject the application security manager as well. It's not really a model class, but it's one of those utility classes that we're going to need. Here it is. So it's application security manager. Bean property called the application security manager and we're going to inject a reference to that bean. Alright. What else do we need? I think that's it. So we have the employee manager, we have the application security manager, we have the form backing object creating a new employee, we have the show form checking out that we are now logging already. We have the unbinding validate, which is the actual the code that authenticates the user, and we have the on submit, which is the one that takes me eventually to the timesheet list once I've I'm been authenticated. So you guys want to see it running? Let's see. If okay, it's running. Oops, I think I saw error messages somewhere in there. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Loading XML, blah, blah, blah. Bean class, signing controller not found. Oh, wait a minute. Bean class, signing controller not found. What did I call it? I thought I called it signing controller. Oh, no, I didn't. It's sign in capital I in controller. And you guys got to be very careful with these typos because I've seen them. You can go crazy. But I know I created it. Look at it. It's right here. You know? how you can test whether you have the right one or not. Go into your XML, hit the control key, and if you see an underscore, you know that it found it. And you can actually click on it and it will take you to that class. If, on the contrary, if you have something misspelled or the package wrong or something like that, when you hover over it and you try it with the control key, you will never find that underscore and you will never be able to get there. Got it? So make sure that you verified every single one of them. There it is. So now I'm going to stop the server because we did a configuration update. Has stopped, so I'm going to run it again. Uh, I don't know. The console looks good now. There it is. No exceptions. In fact, look at this. Nine beans are being loaded now. You remember how many beans we had last time? Six. Good observation. Yeah, he remembers that. Impressive memory. Six beans. Now, can you tell me the new three beans that we created? What new three beans have we created? Signing controller, application security manager, who were we missing that we didn't even need it before?
employee manager I want HTM so I'm gonna modify the the menu in a little while but for now I'm just gonna modify the URL all right what did just happen this is what this is signing that a JSP right with a blank form so it's showing me the form nobody is logged in okay I'm gonna type one and I'm gonna type rapid Java now and I forgot to show you guys the JSP let me show you before I hit the sign in let me show you the JSP very quickly the JSP has a form what is it going to post to? unto itself how do I know? notice that there's no action when there's no action it means that it will post unto itself if you want it to post somewhere else then you will put action equals and then the URL of what you want to uh, post to what, is it what does it have? it has two bound remember spring bind tag it has two bound input tags the first one is called employee ID from the command and the second one is called password from the command remember command class in this case is employee so there's going to be an employee that employee ID and there's going to be employee that password those two are those two input tags are bound to those two properties okay by name status expression and by value status value okay and remember stat when you say status you you're referring to the path password in this case and status here you're referring to the employee ID and that's it and then you have here you have another bind and that bind is pretty much to all the fields of the command but basically what you want to test is whether you have errors so if you have any error messages you're going to be displaying those error messages in red here and error messages is a whole collection it's called that's why we need a for each tag in here so that we can loop through the entire collection of error messages and one by one print them out so if you, you know that if something went wrong with the login you're gonna have errors and when you come back to sign in and you find errors they're gonna show up in red okay all right and that's about it that's all the JS the uh, signing JSP is about so let's click sign in and see what happens a whole bunch of stuff is going on yes whose timesheets did I get a J Kumar's How do I if I log in as Mike Dover it would also give me a J Kumar's timesheets that's right and it's my mistake because timesheet list controller timesheet list controller who is supposed to check who is logged in is not checking who is logged in now in order for timesheet list controller to check who is logged in it's going to need the help of it's going to need the help of the application security manager so why don't we 
just inject it, okay? And this is where you start, once you create all these functionalities independent of each other, this is when you start orchestrating them. Make them work together, okay? You, so far we have a perfectly good timesheet list controller functionality, right? Hey, it gives me a list of timesheets. That's what I wanted. But now I have to integrate it with the authentication process. Now it's no longer acceptable that I show a list of timesheets always from a JKumar. Because sometimes a JKumar is not going to be the guy that is going to be logged in. Somebody else is. So now I'm modifying the existing code and adding integration functionality to it. And this is why it's so important that you guys have unit tests for controllers and unit tests for managers because you're going to be touching code here and there and you don't know what you're breaking. But guess what? You have a security blanket called unit tests. And you're going to be able to run those unit tests and after you modify the code. And if something breaks, you know that you have to fix it. Okay? And not wait until you have deployed this thing to find out that something went wrong. So, let's copy the injection of the application security manager that we did here in the signing controller. Let's inject it into the timesheet list controller. Here it is. Now let's create a property called Application Security Manager. Where? In the Timesheet List Controller. I don't like typing, dude. Application Security Manager. Now let's create the getters and setters so I can actually inject it. Right here. Got it? Now let's go back to handle the request and instead of hard coding employee one, why don't we just say, hey, from employee get. Oh, but wait a minute. It doesn't even know who employee is. Okay. How about if we use the application security manager, tell it to get the employee out of the request, right? And save it in... Uh, we're going we're gonna to have an employee my employee oh I have to add the cast to employee remember the application security manager is saving objects doesn't really care what kind of object so when you say get near the employee it's going to give you back an object you have to cast it. You know that it's going to be an employee, right? So you cast it into an employee. So you say, okay, application security manager, get me the employee that is in the session. So you pass the request because you know the request has the session. You cast it back into an employee. You call it my employee. And then what are you going to do? You're going to ask the timesheet manager to get me the timesheets from my employee dot get Can anybody see it? Employee ID. Huh. Here it is. All right. Now, if a J Kumar is signing, we get a J Kumar's timesheets. If Mike Dover is signing, we will get Mike Dover's timesheets. You want to test it?
This is going to be tricky. And every time that I test it, I'm going to have to shut down the server and reboot the server. You guys know why? Because when I sign in, that employee is in the session. And right now, I don't, I do not have the logout functionality, so I cannot take it out of the session. So the only way that I'm going to be able to take it out of the session is like <coughs> cutting Tomcat. Got it? Until I implement the logout, which is the one that is going to take out the employee out of. Do I go to sign in? Yes. Who am I going to sign in now as? Let's sign in as Ajay Kumar. Visual Pat password. Ajay Kumar Visual Pat. Let's go into the database and find out how many timesheets does J. Kumar have. One, pending. Two, submitted. That's it. Right? It only has two. How many should I get? Yes! We got it. 